Welcome to Pastor Mike's Quick Shots, episode 108. 108 today, we are on, uh, looking forward to talking about community <clears throat> and what it means. <laughs> yeah, this is Pastor Michael Mitchell and Pastor of DeGraff in Maplewood United Methodist Churches. And hopefully you've been keeping up with us. I, I apologize. I, I had it all, I had this grand plan, I had this beautiful grand plan of having a, a more pro professional look. Uh, the audio was supposed to be with a, a better microphone, and uh, none of that came to fruition, and I'm out of time. And so uh, this is what you get, this is what I am, and this is what's happening today. And hopefully you'll understand that it's not about this, it's about the message. The message is about community. It's what we've been talking about for the better part of uh, most of now October. And one of the things that, that I, I see that we, we do a lot is we, I don't want to say we give up, but we tend to put uh, that community, our church community, we tend to put it in a back seat uh, on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. And then when we do that, we tend to, it tends to go monthly, then it goes month after month after month before we don't have that community to be a part of anymore. I think that what happens is we take church family as something different. But I think that's also because our definition of family as a whole has become different. Family is uh, immediate, um, not a lot of, of um, interaction with extras or others at that point. And so you have this group of people and I'm doing all kinds of weird things with my face, I know. Uh, we have this group of people that doesn't really know how to value and do family together. And so now they, they, the family that they have, um, it's different. Uh, not, not traditionally what we would have thought of as family. And now the church family that they're now part of, it's now no longer that, that way. It's a totally different concept of family and what family means. And so... I think we treat other people differently than what we used to. We used to be more trusting. We used to be more open. We used to accept friendships easier. And, and with the, the advent of, of social media and the digital age, with then pumping in a pandemic on top of that, we have this group of people that don't want to do life with each other anymore. And that's just what it is. I was in a new devotional this week uh, called Irresistible Community, and it's by Grace City Church. And, and this is what uh, they're gleaning from 1 Timothy uh, when Paul is trying to write to Timothy and tell him what he thinks the church should look like. Check this out. In 1 Timothy, Paul encourages Timothy to treat the other people in his church as though they were family. In our individualized Western thinking, we can read this and think it's just about how we treat people when we happen to end up chatting to them on a Sunday. But that is not how Timothy would have read it. When you think about what Timothy's going through and what that, that church looked like, they were family-oriented. You typically had several generations of a family that lived together. They lived in the same house. They shared the same land. They shared the same crops. They shared the same animals. And that was out of necessity and it was out of who they were. So when the church became family, when they took each other in, when they provided for each other food, uh, necessities, things of that nature, that's what their family looked like. And now we've broken that model and we don't have any idea what family or that church style community needs to look like. In 1 Timothy 5, 1 and 2, this is where that's coming from. Uh, Paul is writing to Timothy, and he says, that as far as this is what it should look like, never speak harshly to an older man, but appeal to him respectfully as you would to your own father. Talk to younger men as you would to your own brothers. Treat older women as you would your mother, and treat younger women with all purity as you would your own sisters. And so with that concept in mind, that's the family that they knew, that they were encouraging and that they were growing with. We've now got a, a family that looks like uh, it, they're on the go. 
I, I'm no uh, I'm no stranger to that concept or that piece. I I'm running all the time. I, I know I have a one that's uh, now in college, driving his own car and taking himself to work now. But um, when there were two of them, it was twice the work and twice the effort, and with only two parents. And with only one parent that sometimes could do doctor's appointments and things of that nature. So you you are strapping yourself very thin as far as making sure everybody can get to whatever they get to. We we like it because it keeps us active. It keeps our kids involved in something. But it's also busy. But being busy doesn't mean that we're actually working in a good way. It might mean that we're just busy. This irresistible community said this about being busy. If everyone's so busy, what are we so busy doing? How do these things actually contribute to our well-being? The reality is that life isn't actually all that more complicated. We are just offered more things to complicate it with. At Pentecost, 3,000 people put their faith in Jesus after hearing Peter's message. We read that these new believers devoted them, themselves to fellowship. They met every day. It goes on to say that in their meeting, uh, they were out of town. Pentecost was a time of, of celebration. There were still people there uh, celebrating, and, and they weren't there because they were home. They were there in Jerusalem because of the festival. So when they get to this point, they are celebrating together. Now they're hearing Peter's message, and now they're with each other every day. Now, eventually, I'm sure they would go home, but they contributed to each other's well-being while they were there, and they weren't there with each other every day after, after a while. But I think it's intriguing to find that first century church was so incredibly powerful because here we had strangers who didn't know each other who were now treating one another as they were family, which would have in that heritage have been very important. I think in Acts chapter 2, verses 46 and 47, you actually heard me read this here last week. This is now part of this again. It's how important Acts chapter 2 is to community. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. I mean, that not that what that is? Adding together to this number those that are being saved, being a family. It's hard to think of it that way, especially when we're, we're used to not being a family. I found this interesting quote from an article called Coming Together, the Importance of Church Community. And I just thought this was deep. You may be wondering how you fit into the church. In that case, you should explore your gifts and how you can use them to serve others and Christ both now and in the future. Maybe you can commit to attending church regularly, devoting yourself to prayer and reading scripture and getting involved in a ministry at church. Or it could be time to step up into some lay or more formal church leadership role where you can more directly impact the church. For instance, maybe you can start a ministry, mentoring new believers in your church. Ooh, totally stepping outside the edges. I'm not sure where you are on your walk, friend. I don't know where you're going with this. I'm not sure what you're expecting from the relationship with God that you have or the relationship that you have with the church. I know this from a person who's been hurt by the church, who's saw nothing good come out of the church, I know that there is good in these relationships, and I know that it can be fruitful for you. I know that it can be helpful, but it takes an attitude of giving into it, into offering yourself into it, and to working your way into it before you are going to see the work that God can do through you. I hope that you'll join us uh, Sunday morning, Maplewood at 9 a.m. Hopefully I get these times right. The graph Sunday morning at 1030 and uh, we're going to have a, a good time worshiping. We're going to hear more about this. What and What's the importance of prayer in all of this? And uh, how does that praying as a community uh, work even better than just us praying? Hopefully you'll be there. Hopefully you'll dig deeper into these questions. And hopefully 
you'll seek some more answers. Join me in this closing prayer. Gracious God, each of the people in our community is important to you, Lord Jesus. You died so that each of us could experience freedom and eternal life. Help me to be willing to share my gifts with my community. Help us to work together to glorify you by showing love and care for their neighbors. Let us be people whom you are transforming. I pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. Friends, I hope that you have a great rest of your week. Uh, hopefully I can recover from the, the tool. Uh, the tool. I, I'm surprised my voice isn't worse, my speech. Uh, just had two crowns put in. So hopefully it's better than you expected. And hopefully your week gets better than that. And uh, that you will have a great rest of your week. Friends, I look forward to seeing you very, very soon. Have a great week, everybody. Bye-bye.